What is going on YouTube? It's your boy Spanko, today with Mateo. Okay, so, fun fact, we're at Nationals, and Mateo thought he had his invite, and he pretty much got his invite for next year, and not this year, so he needed his invite. So what ended up happening was he played in the LCQ, where it was pretty much a mini regional. So he got the regional, and uh, he got the mat as well, and he came first place. Yep. First place with Ad Ignister. So uh, you go ahead, talk about the deck profile, talk about what happened at the event, and take over. For full context, this is probably not the absolute most optimal. I mentioned a couple of small things. Okay. I threw this deck list together because, again, I didn't think I needed to be playing until the next day. Yeah. So I literally just crammed all this together and started playing LCQs as fast as possible. Because I learned at literally like 10 a.m. that day, hey, you don't got an invite. I was like, oh. Okay. Yeah, it was a very, very weird, <laughs> weird situation weird where thing. you you win an OTS championship, but yeah, they're the like weekend before Nats, and it's not for this Nats. It's not for this Nats. Uh, the next again, one, whatever. I think uh, the deck is really solid. My matchups were two Eldritch, Despia, and what was the last one? Punktherian. So someone decided that the most powerful card in Yu-Gi-Oh was to pull the Fire Alarm. Oh yes. Um, so they did end up giving invite to top two, but I played for first for the mat, and I got that. So yeah, you got the first place. Um, but yeah, uh, overall, I think this deck has potential. I played it for main event. My plan was to go play side events for the most of the day. So when I lost, you, he just day, wanted his invite for the yeah, for the Nibiru mat, Nibiru and, then, mat and all that. Yeah, well, I wanted I wanted to play main event until I lost. And I just got like Omega sacked by Flunder, which everyone's had which, that happen. It's, but it's, like, it's whatever. I, I didn't expect to play that long anyways. I think this deck has potential for main event and stuff like that. I just didn't feel like it. Yeah. Uh, I Side wanted event to, game. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, yeah. Let's get into it. Let's get this started. 55 in the main. 55. Um, or sorry, 50. Sorry. 50. Yeah. Uh, 50, it's a weird number, but... It you're makes playing sense. basically, I think it's like 15 cards that are full combo okay. at all times. And then you're playing an additional few cards that are half combo or like slightly worse full combo. Okay. Um, Consistency is not an issue. It's more an issue of seeing a good mix of obviously non-engine and, and engine. your normal summons. Yeah. And there's some cards in this that really help with that. But let's just right. start with the actual monsters. Three Chi Chi. Full combo. Broken. I mean, card's really good. I think it's the best normal summon. It's only slightly better than Picari. P the Picari normal summon, you have to do the reveal heat soul and you take 23 at the end. Normally doesn't matter. Just a small thing. But yeah, both of these cards are insane. Uh, this card's secondary effect comes up actually. Uh, so does this card's. This card's secondary effect only comes up for making update jammer. Because you can make uh, both of the cards level four and then go into update jammer with them with like a Hiari that's normally level one. So that's nice. Secondary effect to this card, no one ever reads past the add effect. Uh, if you're gonna get hit for game really hard, you can banish this from Grave to destroy your own Cybers monster during the damage step so they can't read a clear. Oh. It's a small thing that like no one reads that. Like you will catch a lot of people if you know what it does. Okay. It never, like it barely comes up, but it's really, really strong. Okay. Uh, two Doyon, really good card. I mean, it just says add back everything. Yep. Uh, add back a monster and then add back a spell trap. Uh, the spell trap add back is really nice for follow up because it's the only thing you hard end on in hand for follow up. Obviously, really good card. Bururu, one of combo. This is the card that hurts the most to draw. Doesn't hurt that bad. You make splash mage instead, but yep. it's the card that like you really want to add this card. Um, and this is the card that hurts the most to banish off desires. You still only have you only play one of this card. It's not the greatest to draw, but it's just an insane thing that you can get generically from your extra deck with a search. Uh, I'm playing one Hiari and one Gachiri. Hiari is really good. Uh, obviously, in general, just having inherent special summons is really strong in a lot of formats. And then Gachiri, obviously, it's a semi-inherent special summon that doesn't require your main monster zones to be empty. And then it can make any Link monster unaffected, so it can dodge things like strikes, things like that kind of stuff. Unaffected by card effects? It makes it completely unaffected, yep. Oh, okay. Uh, so basically, until the end of the next turn, it's just Arrival Cybers. But okay. This, like, you can do this with Access Code Talker when you've already used Arrival Cybers. You can do this with, like... Random stuff. Because a 5,300 attack monster, almost no deck can get that big. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and then, especially if it's access code, you start popping this stuff again, and it's really good. Uh, so that's like the sort of uh, one of This is the Garnet. Uh, in hand, it can attack negate, which, I mean, if you draw it, it can come up. But this is the Omni negate that you can play from the graveyard. You dump it with your Bururu, and when you have a Link 6, it just says you can hot-red something. When most decks are only playing one out to your big boss monster, like for example, Sword Soul's only out is Cheng Ying. I mean, a lot of decks only out is like Boral Sword or Axis Code Talker. Yeah. Having to play this in the main, I, I've seen people side this. It's not completely incorrect. I think it's really good to main it this format specifically. Yeah. Just because most decks only have one out. And if you can deal with the one out, they literally can't win the game. Yeah. Um, and you just play Advantage from there and find a window to access code them. For the non-engine, for monsters, Three Ashes, obviously, is super, super good. 
I'm playing Gamma Driver because there's a lot of cards that really don't like getting Gamma Driver in this format. A lot of the punk cards, it gets really, really awkward. Like if you Gamma Deer Note, it gets really, really awkward. Even things like Longyan, like Moye, feel really like good to Gamma because it's you get a bunch of information and you get to do all kinds of stuff. Quick question. Yeah. Are you okay. going first or are you going second? Going first. Okay, so always I, going first. Gamma, obviously going first is not super great, but it's just so good going second. And your deck is already really, really strong going first. Yep. Um, that I think it's not a necessity. You could play nibs or you could play drolls. Uh, I saved a lot of those for the side deck just because they're slightly less generic hand traps than things like Gamma, but very valid to try them out in main as well. Playing two Valor. Uh, normally I was gonna play three, but I decided to play the one of Crow. Normally that would be really, really bad, but it's for a specific uh, small world sort of line. Like into Despia going second. It's so insane. Um, you could side it, but it did come up. Having access to that game one is just absurd. And I'll show off that and when we get to the spells a little deeper. And then obviously three and perm. It's the best uh, spot negate sort of trap like that. It's going good. first, going second. Yeah, it's pretty alright going second, especially against the scythe lock decks. You hit the Hulk in standby and you attempt to stop the scythe. But yeah, that kind of stuff feels pretty good. Getting into the sort of uh, engine spells, 3A I meet you. Really good combo piece. Uh, it's like half of your combo by itself. You need this plus literally any name that even, it doesn't have to be a good one, just any name. Uh, it's full combo. Three, Island. If you're not playing this card at three, please play it at three. It's so, so good. Even to draw, because many people, at least that like have a cursory idea of what the deck does, will stop you from getting to this card as much as possible. And just being able to say, I hard drew it, is such a plus. I mean, it's, it's such an insane card. I'm playing one of each of the Reborns. I played two of this for a really long time, obviously, until this came out. I think you can still play two of this. It very rarely comes up where you need both of these. They can theoretically synergize where this can banish to protect me, this can banish to add it back, but stuff like that doesn't come up super often. If you're wanting to play like max optimal, uh, you can play one of one and one. Two reborns probably fine though. The one sort of spot that some people play, some people don't. Contact is really good. For those of you that don't know what it does, if you have too many of the field spell, what it can do is if you have field spell in your field spell zone and then one in your hand, you reveal the one in your hand, put it on the bottom of the deck and draw three cards. Draw th what? Yeah. Three cards. Three cards. Uh, because it's still only a plus one because you have to use itself and the extra field spell, but with how many of the field spell you're able to get with the link one, which is near free advantage, uh, it's just a really nice thing to have access to. It powers you to your side deck really, really fast games two, three. That's the main reason that it's really nice to have. Or I guess like problematic matchups. So for example, I knew I was going to play against Mystic Mind just because of the way that LCQs work. Yeah. So I powered for Cosmics as fast as possible. I drew two off Desires. I drew three off this. And I was able to see one, and that's the sort of like way to win the matchup going first is you try and see your as uh, many cards as possible. Yeah, as many cards as humanly possible because your yeah. end boss monster means nothing. Yeah. Three Sunnet Mining, obviously just three more copies of all the best cards in your deck, and then three Small World, best card in the deck. I am not joking when I say you can bridge from anything to anything. There's very little like things you can't bridge to unless there's like desires banishing like half the good bridges. Since all of your Cybruses are different levels, different attributes, all that kind of stuff, it's really easy to just bridge to literally any hand trap. And then if you have extra hand traps, you can bridge to a starter. They're all different levels, different attribute. Different attack, attack and, defense. and defense. Yeah. They just threw random numbers on most of these cards. Yeah. So, so it works out really well. Busted, yeah. Small world is just insane. I mean, searching DD Crow going second against Despia is like a corner case, but yeah. it's so, so good. I wish there were more sort of like hand traps that were good going second because I would play a lot of them just as small world cards, but even the way it is now, I mean, it's just really, really strong. Uh, I'm gonna get lynched, but this card winning these games and I'm gonna keep playing it until Konami yeah. deals with it. Like, playing this card into Despia, into Sword Soul, like Sword Soul only has two outs. One of them's blackout, one of them circle tributing like three separate times. It just wins the game by itself. And before, I like this deck. I can't believe it talked. Yeah. Never mind, I take it <laughs> never back. Never mind, uh, yeah. Never mind, No, I, I mean, again, back. like, it never feels good, but you... you but you gotta do it. You gotta do it. You gotta, it. Do, you gotta take advantage Especially of what's for LCQs. available. For yeah, LCQs, yeah. Like, if it's side events or something like that, do whatever you want. But like, for LCQs, you're trying to win, you gotta play what wins. Yeah. And this card just FDKs Despia, and it does really, really well into so many other decks. The terraforming as well is just extra copies of the field spell. Field oh, that makes sense. Yeah, that's true. Um, three Cosmic Cyclone. In the I main deck. In the main deck. Uh, since I'm playing 50, I have the space for... I kind of want my own Mystic Mind out. Oh, okay. That Stupid makes sense. enough. I think Quick Play Removal is really good this format, uh, especially against Flunder, which 
I thought there would be a lot of, and I was right. The main reason I thought there would be a million Flunder players is because it's like $70 for the whole deck, except That's for Prospeed. It's cheap. And I think it was going to be the easiest deck for someone that got their invite in like 2019 or something to like pick up and just immediately be able to play for Nats. Funny enough, <laughs> for a main event, that was the only thing I lost to before I like went to go play sides. Sad, but, sad. You know, but sometimes it, it's it's like that. But I, I'd still keep these. I think uh, Lightning Storms are also an option. Uh, Twins are also an option. Both of them are really strong. Uh, I think Cosmic's the best main deck one. I think I'm, I'm also citing Twins. I mean, it's good overall. I think Storms are slightly better in main deck just for the monster versatility, but I didn't have them and Cosmics worked out really nicely. Okay. Because I played against a lot of Eldritch. <laughs> like a lot of Eldritch. Desires, really good card. Obviously there's a couple one ofs and two ofs that if you banish all of them, it's really bad, but you're playing 50, chances aren't super high. Seeing cards is good. <laughs> and then if you can go through your, if you have your combo anyways, I'm assuming you just go through engine. You go through your whole combo you that you desire before, is for yeah. side deck. Yeah, you, exactly. you deck thin like crazy and you try and see your side deck or you try and see generic hand traps. Yep. And then the last card, just called by. Of course. I mean, this is another card that shouldn't be in the game. It's not as egregious as Mystic Vine, but the fact that this card exists. This card is nuts. It's so like, it just feels bad when you get called by the yeah. one of, you know? Extra deck next. It's relatively simple until we get to the second half of it. Okay. Uh, two Dark Infant. I know people play three of this with Contact specifically. I think two is a really good spot just because the extra deck is really tight for this version and a lot of other versions. Wicked, mandatory combo piece, really insane card. When you summon to its Link Zone, it grabs you a Cyber's Tuner, so it grabs you your Baruru. The fact that it just protects itself from battling card effects and everything it points to from card effects is really, really absurd against like random control decks. Like Torrentials, like Conquistadors could do literally nothing in the matchup because you have the field spell, it just resets itself. Like all kinds of really dumb stuff. Like you can make this card and then just make an access code here and they can do nothing, like a lot of the time. Uh, so it feels really, really good. Two Splash Mage. I know some people play this at a one. I really like the versatility with uh, the two Splash, two Transcode. It lets you link climb and get really good advantage because obviously you need one of each of these for your first turn combo. And then having the versatility of either if one of them gets stopped or if one of them you know, is used for your... You, you guys are going to see combo. Mateo really likes two ofs in this extra deck. Uh, yeah, the, ne two the, ne number one, the yeah. next two of is a little uh, unnecessary, but it came up way more times than I ever thought it was, is two access code. I think two access code. This card came up like four times. Like, yeah. The second one came up four times. That's crazy. It, it's really insane, especially against like random combo decks. They'll like judgment your first one and they'll go, okay, save from access code. Because no one so ever expects code. a second one. No, no one ever sees it coming, right? Yeah. I, I mean, what can I say besides it came up? Obviously, you need to play at least one. I yeah. think that's the only like expensive card in this whole deck. Yeah. If you can't afford the one access, it gets a little murky. You can play some like other stuff, but I'd recommend just access code. I mean... There's nothing that replaces this card. Yeah. It's just so, so it's just good. just so good, yeah. Especially since you're Cybers locked, there, you can't play like Boros Sword or any of that kind of stuff, unfortunately. But the reason, like, especially second trans, second uh, splash is good because you can go into second access code. Yeah. And it, it pairs up really nicely for the, obviously, the boss monster and the other adding monster stuff. I mean, boss monster, best card's insane. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's yeah. Just, Dark so Templar is nuts. It says summon three. If this resolves, it's nuts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People that don't know the deck will hand trap you way before this ever hits the field. Yeah. Because you have to go out of your way a little bit uh, to summon it since the material requirement's a little weird, but this almost never gets hand trapped just because people don't know what the deck is. Yeah. Uh, if you want, I can show off the combo a little bit. Yeah. Uh, update Jammer, it just says, hey, your 53 access code's now game. Yeah, it's, like, now, it, it's it, now two times 53. GG's. Yeah, it, it's really, really easy to make. Yeah, it, it's it's updated. I don't think I need to explain it that much. Uh, Security Dragon is something I need to explain a little bit. You need something to get your own Nibiru and the Nibiru token off the field. Oh. Out of your main monster zones. Okay. So your field spell can pop off. I've seen people play Link Spider. I don't think that's incorrect. I was just really tight on space. So I cut it down to the Security Dragon only. This deck can have a little bit of issues without this card. Outing things that can't be destroyed. For example, without this card, I would have... Uh, I had played against Hero in another side of it. I would have had a really hard time outing Malicious Bane unless I could just make this card. That makes sense. Because uh, you have like Wind Pegasus, but that's obviously kind of hard to set up when you have only your big boss monster on the field. I just think it's a really clean way to do a couple different things that your deck needs to do. You can go normal summon plus the token off arrival of Cybers for free bounce when you're trying to kill people. It just sets up the board really nicely. Uh, and then the last Link monster is going to be the Heat Soul. All my homies hate Fire Pegasus. Yeah, that card's yeah. terrible, but you had to play it until this card came out. I never summoned it a single time. <laughs> but, oh, okay. But it's just nice to have the option when you get Nibiru, you go into Security Dragon, any monster, into draw two. Okay. And then you just sense. try and see as many defensive cards as possible, as many options as you can. Theoretically, that could make three Valor correct over three Imperm, but like, Imperm's just better. And then last part of your combo, you can use this as a part of your combo, it's not mandatory. 
Uh, I like doing it just in case there's random decks like Chengying. I'd like to get that off the field if possible when they're Ill when they're adding my things. Or if people just no one remembers this card exists. Yeah, <laughs> like yeah, no yeah, one remembers yeah. this in the grave because yeah. they're more worried about the negate, right? Because that's like the one that this is just a punishment send in exactly. today's format. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, like no one actually plays this card. On field effect, this card is really good. Yeah. Uh, like just popping like upwards of five spell traps is obviously really strong. The end board that I made against Mystic Mine was big arrival cybers plus this, and then. Pop the mine and end phase, and then they just realize, oh, I'm losing all my cards next turn. And then, yeah, yeah, it's just really good in general. I guess all that's left is the side, side deck. deck. Uh, relatively generic. I mean, more targeted hand traps. Just for specific matchups. Yeah. Again, you can bridge to all of these if you need to going first. Uh, Nibiru is actually still really good going first in this deck because you can Nibiru your own arrival cybers, and it doesn't go away. Because it's completely oh, unaffected. It's unaffected, yeah. I mean, that's the main thing. Like, it makes the normally only going second hand trap, like Nibiru, or like one that you doesn't feel great. It just makes it insane. Yeah, it makes because sense. everyone's always like, "Oh yeah, it goes to grave." Uh, no, 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 it doesn't. No, it doesn't. <laughs> so, and then they go, "Okay, I'm going next." The fact that you can small word bridge to them is just it's kind of nice. so good. Um, last, I had one extra spot, and I thought, okay, I'll toss the third Veiler in. There's no, like, rhyme or reason. I just had an extra spot because of the way that the rest of the side deck worked out, and I was kind of scrambling to rhyme my deck list. Makes so sense. I put the third Veiler in there. I didn't love it, didn't hate it. It was just kind of the third Veiler. Twin's really good. More back row. Chainable back row into Flunder was, like, again, Flunder was the thing I would, like, This deck is really good going first in the Flunder, as long as they don't see Shifter, but, like, no deck is good against Shifter. Yeah. And then going second in the Flunder, it's where this these cards get like really really good because if you can hit map plus uh dreaming town and standby they can't do anything there goes all their interaction all you have to deal with is uh the things on the field which is still pain but it's better than having to deal with double mega Ryza and then all that this is good against flunder not as good but it's just it's harpies against every good eldritch all those random combo yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah you know like dynamorphia eldritch all that like random back row heavy stuff it's just really good into i think people a lot of people cut this for storms which is completely fine but i think you just can't beat no conditions activate slam it on the field okay yeah. game's over the format tax of d barrier of course is the format tax. You, you have to play this card in any deck that isn't planning on blinding second and even half of those are playing this card for when they get forced to go first it just says end sword soul and despious turn it's that simple yep and then in random rogue decks, last course. cards of every boot uh you could cut this and the veiler for like two more cards this card comes up but just not as much as uh like some other stuff it's a obviously really good card but i don't think there's that many like trap cards that are worth impactful. rebooting that you really like need to do all that kind of stuff that you can't just deal with another side deck card so the, the two cut spots on the side are these two for sure but i think it worked out pretty well definitely this for maybe second crow would have been nice yeah um just to round it out a little nicer but it all it all worked out first place lcq yeah. deck profile yeah i mean the only round that was a little weird was the one where the fire alarm got pulled yeah but yeah i mean i think uh, all my matches were relatively comfortable i mean this deck just has a really really favorable eldritch matchup yep and i played against that twice that was definitely like obviously a plus but this deck has a really like broken despia matchup really good sword soul matchup punk therian doesn't really have an out to most of your plays that you want to go for yeah it just has an overall, like, favorable matchup spread. The only thing that they can really do to you is that they're non-engine cards. And uh, I have one more question. You said you wanted to show a combo. Is there a combo you want to show us? Is there that one-card combo? Yeah, it's a one-card combo. Yeah. A lot of people already know it, but for the people that are trying to get into the deck, I'll show it off really, really quickly. Yeah. So your one-card combo is... The simple version of it is one copy of either Picari or Chichi. So one or the other? Yeah, either one. Okay. You, you just need one or the other. You can get through these through Small World Sign Out, all that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. There's a lot of different two card combos, but those are a little like harder to go over just now. Yep. Uh, normal either of them. Uh, if you normal this, you add AI meet you to add this. If you normal this, you add this, and then okay. this grabs you AI meet you for later. Um, either way, you get to the same game state. The only thing is, Picari just has to show Fire Phoenix, which you're probably, or not Fire Phoenix, but Heat Soul, which you're probably not summoning. So yeah. you take a little bit of damage, it doesn't really matter. I'll use the Achichi one just because it's the slightly like, not harder, but different one. I uh, summon a Chi-Chi, link one, and then you grab your field spell as well. Uh, so you grab your field spell, field spell summon the Picari, Picari to grab the AI yeah, meet you. And then you, usually I prefer to just do the meet you first, get out of the way. Reveal Dark Templar. Um, and then you gotta go for Cybers Wicked. Uh, again, this comes crazy um yeah. you to grab the doyon and as long as you can get to sort of this board state with yeah. any like weird hand where it's wicked plus doyon is full combo yeah so you can wicked doyon which is absurd chain link obviously but 
you add this back. I prefer banishing the uh, Dark Infant. You can banish the uh, Picari and it probably won't come up. I just prefer doing Dark Infant. Sometimes you can do weird things where like you can bring back Dark Infant with transcode under something for like a just big bunch of bodies, but you're putting a second one in there with your combo anyways. So this comes back to your hand and then you obviously grab the uh, Baruru. And then it's a little weird because you have to go into transcode here. And then the good thing about Splash Mage and Transcode in this deck is they're not on summon. So you can use this first when your main monster zones are clear and then use your Transcodes and your Splash Mage as yep. well. So you use the Field Spell to summon out the Baruru. Uh, Baruru will send the sort of Brick Omni Negate and then you will Transcode back the Wicked. And from here, we go into the Dark Templar. We'll summon the Achichi since this was the one we normal summoned, not the one we uh, special summoned special summon this. So we're still allowed to do that and we'll summon this. Uh, Templar will trigger, and then off of that, Dark Infant will trigger, move itself here, and it'll call Divine, uh, just so it can't coincide with anything else. Yeah, it makes sense. These three are the normal ones to summon. Uh, fire is important, just because you don't have any other fires that you're trying to go into here. You can go any four, like if you forget your Doyon trigger, like I did when I was explaining this, you can summon Doyon here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Doyon's supposed to add back Meet You. But if you, for example, if you forget to add back and you summon Doyon here, you still just synchro with these into uh, the Wind Pegasus. You trigger to summon back the other material. And then you just link with these into the Splash Mage. You Splash Mage back the Picari, for example. Oh, or even like Baruru, just in case you didn't have the Picari in the other version of the line. Yep. And then you just go all of this into the big boy. So there's one card combo, gets the card in hand. Yep. So net zero, but you have unaffected big boy. Unaffected big boy, graveyard negate, and when Pegasus is setting this to float. Dang. And you have the field spell, so. Dang. And not a lot of people have outs for this. No, I, it's 5,000 standard. With one extender, you can use the only attribute that you have access to remaining, which is Gachiri. Uh, like if you have an extra search, for example, you can make it 6K. The only time that makes a difference is with 5,300 access code talker. The only other card that trades favorably with it is Boral Sword because Boral Sword, if it's 6K, it'll gain 3K to go to 6K. Yeah. And then it'll crash, but Boral Sword can be destroyed by battle. So makes sense. that's the only thing that feels bad. But again, you have this to deal with those and then you have Wind Pegasus to not die if they somehow randomly get it off the field. Perfect. Well, thank you for the deck profile. Thank you for the combo. Congratulations on first place again. Got the nice play mat. Got the nice deck box. And uh, yeah, make sure to let us know in the comment section down below what you guys think. I mean, obviously came first place, so it's definitely good. Thank you guys all for watching. Mateo, thank you. Congratulations again. Make sure to like and subscribe if you guys haven't already. And with that, Spanko and Mateo, sign it out. Peace. Okay, yo, so this was all just like a one card combo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I got a one card combo for you. No! Ah! <laughs> <laughs>